Hello everyone, my name is Hope Pena and I will be demonstrating PECS for you today. PECS stands for Picture Exchange Communication System and was developed in 1985 by Bondi and Frost in order to help children on the autism spectrum develop communication skills. So that might be initiation of language or just increasing on the use of words and also giving the child a way to communicate without vocalizations. PECs were broken down into six steps in order to do that and in order to teach the child how to use PECs as a communication system. So we're going to talk about that today. Before I dive into that, I just want to show you what a PECs book looks like. So when you purchase a PECs book, it comes with the actual book itself. It comes with a strap that helps the child carry it around and keep it close by. And it comes with Velcro on both the front and inside for pages. Now you can add more pages to this book in order to uh, add more images to it. The other crucial parts to this book are the communication strips. So this is what the child will do sentence structures on. And we also need, most importantly, the symbols themselves. These are icons that represent what the child wants. So it'll have the image of what the child wants along with a word at the bottom for what that image is. Sorry, the lighting is um, kind of whiting that out. But this one is pretzels and says pretzels on it. We have chips. We have ones that say I want for the child and so on and so forth. So to begin, we need to start with phase one. And in phase one, we're focused on the exchange of a PEC because right now the learner does not know how to do that. So we will have a highly preferred item. Let's say our child really loves Doritos. So we're going to use this picture of Doritos. And we want to have the PEC on a table nearby the child. And we're going to prompt them to give us the picture of the Doritos to pick it up and place it in the communication partner's hand. Okay, so that's just the exchange. And we're just focused on one symbol, picking it up and putting it in the teacher's hand. Now it is really helpful to have a third person there. Um, so one person in addition to yourself and the child in order to prompt that child. They might stand behind and just kind of nudge them to go towards this picture, maybe point to the picture and show them like, hey, this is what you want and you want to put it in the communication partner's hand. Um, again, this is a new concept for these kids, so prompting at the beginning can be very helpful. And then you can fade that prompt back after the child is mastering that skill. So now we want to go to phase two, which is distance and persistence. Most children will talk louder or tap you or say your name repeatedly, but children that don't have those communication skills need to be able to get the communication partner's attention um, and use their PEC system. So now we're going to teach the child that when the communication partner is on the other side of the room or distracted or looking at something, we want them to be able to, to travel to where their PECs are to pick up the icon and travel to where the partner is. So um, you might use a prompting um, partner again, have that additional person to show the child, hey, we need to walk to this picture. We're going to pick it up and bring it to the person that we're communicating with. Once that skill is mastered, we can move into picture discrimination. So. It's important that the child can not only hand you a picture, but that the picture actually corresponds with what the child wants. So as you can see, I have balloons, I have bubbles, um, Doritos, pretzels, and there's all different types of pictures in here. So we want the child to be able to discriminate and to use the corresponding picture to what they want. This is really going to help in later steps. So let's say our child really wants those Doritos again. We are going to have them, um, or, and the child needs to walk over and to pick up the Doritos icon and hand it to you. So we don't want them to grab the bubbles icon when we know that they want Doritos. This is really important for the child to learn in order to move on. Once that skill has been mastered, we can move on to phase four, which is our sentence production. This is where the sentence strip is really going to come in hand, and we're going to use the symbol for I want. So we're going to have the I want symbol on there, and the child is now learning to place what they want let's say they want bubbles, and place it on the sentence strip. The child will then rip off this sentence strip and put it in the communication partner's hand. While you're developing this skill, this is going to be the first step, just placing that, that sentence strip into the communication partner's hand. You might later want to teach the child to point to the um, different pictures, so that way they're beginning to know that they're saying, I want, and an image, okay? So then you can 
um, build on those language skills and, and require the child to maybe say, I want, and then point to the picture. Or they might develop these language skills quickly and they'll say, I want bubbles. And this is a great visual prompt for the child. Um, I've had clients who can verbally say it once they have it in their hand and they see and it's like a reminder for them of, okay, I have to say I want and then what, what the child wants. So in this case, bubbles. Um, once the child is able to do that sentence production, we can move on to answering questions, which is phase five. So in phase five, we're going to want to be able to go to the child and say, hey, what do you want? And they can go to their pecs. They can place the item. They might search through their book for what they actually want um, and place that with the I want pec. All right, so... Now that we have the sentence production down, we can go into our final phase, which is phase six. The child is now going to be able to learn how to do commenting. So with commenting, we need a different type of icon. So this one, like we've talked about in user ready, is the I want icon. For commenting, you're going to want icons that say I see, I hear, I have, um, things like that. And the child will then be able to place that different type of icon on the sentence strip and let's say for example it says I hear they might search through and find this is a toy that makes sound so it makes music they might place that on there and say I hear toy or you might have a car or you might have one that says I see and different animals you can have colors you can have numbers in here it really just advances the child to be able to comment on their surroundings and in combination with being able to answer questions to request items and to be able to comment on things really helps the child have a vocabulary that they wouldn't otherwise have um, with their verbal um, limitations. So that is PEX in a wrap. I really like this system because it is simple to teach. It's simple to use. Um, one drawback is that you can't put everything you possibly want into this book. Um, the, there is limitation to space, um, and but you really want to focus on the things that the child asks for the most. And you can, like I said, add pages to this. Eventually it's going to fill up. Um, but children get really good at searching through this for the item that they want. And um, Depending on language development, they'll be able to start using words as well. But I would say that's one drawback to the PECs. Um, other than that, I think it's a great system, and I was happy to explain it to you guys. Have a great one.